And you have a very interesting style, to say the least. It has political overtones, so I'm uh, sure you I'm can a, tell us a lot about I'm that. An editorial cartoonist, so mm -hmm. that's my job. Um, in terms of political overtones, I'm not sure how to answer that, except well, that this is a great election year to work in. Um, I, I think I recognize that guy. Yeah, this is a drawing I did a little more than a year ago uh, when the country was uh, really turning against the war in Iraq after the Democrats had taken back control of uh, Congress. And uh, the movie 300 was out, and I did Dick Cheney as a lead uh, Spartan warrior uh, defending the White House. And uh, you can read it on this. The caption for the cartoon is that they were the only ones still willing to defend the Bush administration. So the way I work is I do a, a, a black and white line drawing that I scan into a computer and then I uh, color it in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. The gallery is showing version. the original drawings and we're selling prints of the color version. So this is how oh, look at it, that. it looks in color. By the way, I have to commend you on your handwriting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you do that by hand? I do. I, I do all my lettering and drawing with the same fountain pen and uh, years of practice. But Impressive. I can write... It's almost as fast as an average person writes in this style. Impressive. Very strong lines. Quite interesting. Now, we've got a lot of meat to go around as far as this you know, mm -hmm. election campaign is concerned. So I want to ask you right away, sure. you're going to just bypass this one for right now. Uh, the lady of the day, <laughs> or at least uh, the month, has been Sarah Palin. Yeah. So you didn't miss out on an opportunity to spoof her. No, no. And this was, um, this cartoon's captioned Bull Moose Maverick. And it actually uh, makes reference to a famous cartoon of uh, Teddy Roosevelt mm -hmm. and Bull Moose with a, a, a very similar drawing of the moose with Teddy's face on it with uh, the, big, the big grin. And mm -hmm. so I have her leading, I have Sarah Palin leading McCain by the nose uh, <laughs> over to the social conservative side of the Republican Party. Oh, that's cool. Well, oh, here's, here's the... Uh, Color version of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Anyway. And you, how so, do you color this, by the way? It looks... So it's scanned in Photoshop. Um, I use the heavy black line because, um, you know, I can drop in a lot of colors without ruining the line work. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'll do a cool little fade. Mm -hmm. I'll isolate this area and just fade the sky. And then drop in my basic colors. And then um, separate the black layer out from the color layer. And take a Wacom tablet... Uh, pen mouse, and, and literally painting like watercolor painting. Um, layers of, uh, you know, I do 20% of a color, or 50 or whatever, and just paint layer over layer on it, and it looks just like a watercolor. Back in the 80s, we would have done that by hand with an airbrush, right? I never passed your airbrush, but I used to do a lot of illustration work in watercolor. And I, I think if I hadn't worked in watercolor first, I would not have come up with this style uh, on, in Photoshop. Well, everybody knows who this is. So, uh, you know, I don't know if she's going to be around uh, much longer, <laughs> but... Uh, she's I mean, been a blessing. If you're a cartoonist and an atheist, you, you, you can't help but believe that the Lord provides. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's yeah. funny. So you're an opportunist <laughs> also, in some ways, right? <laughs> John McCain? John McCain, and this is my take on the whole lipstick on a pig furor. Um, here's a cartoon that uh, would have been funny in black and white, but not nearly as great as could be in color. Um, so this is the line drawing, and the, the tubes of lipsticks are, are labeled lipstick distraction and phony outrage and the low road and smears. And he's the Joker from the Batman. And in color, you can get the full effect. Yeah, it's look at that. And, oh, that's uh, ugly. <laughs> it is ugly. One of the uglier drawings I've done, but one of the more popular ones I've done this year. And they're going to sue you about using that logo, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Is there no shame in your game? <laughs> Any advertisement is good advertising, isn't it? That's what they say. Um, you know, I want to ask you, because, you know, they say the ability to write is as powerful as, you know, as, as any power, or speaking or writing and all that. You're a communicator. Yeah. On both levels, artistic as well as speaking. It's a weird profession because a lot, there are a lot of artists out there who are much more talented than I am, and of course, so many writers who are better writers, but... Oh, Cartoonist, come on, that's modesty. It's the way a cartoon, it's, 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 a, it's a strange skill. Not a lot of people have it or not a lot of people spend enough time developing it. Mm -hmm. But a cartoonist might boast that I can draw better than anyone who can write better than me. And mm -hmm. I can write better than anyone who can draw better than me. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of in-between art form. 
you know. Um, Have you actually had those kind of challenges put towards you where you, <laughs> I can do anything, you can do better, that kind of thing. Maybe we could do that. Maybe we could make a little TV series out of that. You know, your mom's <laughs> Last here. Last cartoon is standing. Yeah, right. And I, I want to point this out because you're obviously a very, very bright, bright guy. But your mom said that you were starting to dabble in this at three years old. That's true. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But I really didn't get into it until fourth grade, fifth grade. I started drawing comics um, of all my classmates. Mm -hmm. And I did kind of a little bestiary of the, of, like Mrs. Hughes fourth, fifth, Mr. Hughes' fifth grade class. Of, you know, I did everybody as a different animal. And wow! I photocopied it and sold them. And kind of was you saved those? No, I said I sold them to kids in the. Comics. I know, but you save any copies or uh, you sell them all? Uh, there might be one somewhere yeah. in the box. <laughs> I say frame that man. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's extraordinary when you think about you know here's where you started. Mm -hmm. You know, at three, four years old, you were starting to show signs mm -hmm. of something that would eventually make a living or help you to make. Yeah, a living. it takes a lot of luck. It takes, certainly it takes talent and hard work, but it takes a lot of luck and a lot of breaks come along at the right time. But you were but, sickeningly determined, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> that helps. An old cartoonist gave me a great bit of advice when I was 20 years old and you know, looking for advice from people on how to break into the business. Mm -hmm. And he told me something he'd learned from, a, from an art instructor, which is that everybody has 10,000 bad drawings in their system. And if you can get them all out of your system and on paper, then maybe you got a chance mm -hmm. of being a decent artist. So that just means you got to work, work, work. And, and test yourself and challenge yourself. And, and Is it really 10,000? That's a lot of work, man. I, I don't think I'm at 10,000 yet, so maybe we can lower it. I mean, standards are dropping all over the world. I don't know. But, I don't know. but, but, but let me but, ask you this. The way the market is right now, mm -hmm. how is it making a living versus the way it was 20 years ago? Um, I, I used to do a lot of work freelancing, doing illustrations, and a lot of illustrators I know are finding it really hard now. Mm -hmm. I'm very lucky to be at a, at a daily newspaper, have a regular gig. Um, so in that sense, it's harder. More people are using clip art, more people are using computer-generated art. So it's harder for illustrators. Um, magazines, newspapers don't have the budgets they used to have to buy, to buy great art. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough times. I, most of the artists I know Great illustrators who are working in magazines, newspapers, they're all doing children's books right now. Mm -hmm. And whether they're making a living or not, I don't know. I mean, you can certainly hit it big if you, get a, if you have a bestseller and get a movie deal. But mm -hmm. if you're just going from children's book to children's book, it's, it can be pretty tough. So Simpsons are a real unusual circumstance. I mean, they were very successful. Yeah. Yeah. And continue to be, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if you call that children's. <laughs> That's exactly children's illustration. Right. But... But ha are you working on your own characters that you could probably cultivate oh, into some kind of mass market? I've been given advice to do that. I've been given advice oh. to do my own characters, and no. You don't listen to that, huh? Yet. You're not desperate enough yet to do that, right? Editorial cartoons are like the uh, the crack cocaine yeah. <laughs> of the business. You know, you, every day you get a new, jo new joke. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I talk about this with my colleagues. I wake up, I have no clue what I'm going to draw that day. Mm -hmm. You know, something in the news, you know, I'll be drawing lipstick on pigs one day. Yeah. You know, be, and that's fun. I really like that. I think if I were drawing a, a comic strip and doing the same characters in the same settings, you know, from the same angles, day after day after day, I'd get bored. I'd get bored. But it's mostly political that you're that you're tuned into, right? So, yeah. you know, regardless of who becomes president, you're still going to have some work to do, one way or the other. There's right? always a new cast of characters. Well, and there's always something happening in the world. Yeah. Well, God help anyone who becomes president when you're behind the <laughs> helm, because you can really. Take that, and you can you can find an angle on something that can be really tough to accept, right? God help me, because I think Barack Obama's the first president, the first candidate that I've truly admired. Wow, so I'm going to be in a weird place in a, in a, in a couple of months if, if, uh, if he does win this election. Yeah, well, you have to tone down the ears, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on, we had four years of that, or eight years of that with Mr. Bush, so mm -hmm. yeah, tone down the ears a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, are. sure. I can't get a guarantee yeah, on that one. Exactly. I'm sure. All right, RJ Madsen, uh, how can people get in touch with you or see more of your work? Obviously, you're with two well, papers now. And I'm at uh, three papers, but the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, mm -hmm. the New York Observer, and uh, Roll Call, uh -huh. Capitol Hill paper here in Washington. And my uh, cartoons um, are syndicated, 900 papers all over the country, so chances are to see them somewhere. Uh, but you can go to my website and see everything in an archive format. So the, uh, the website is... Uh, www.rjmatson.com. Okay. R J M A T S O N. And uh, we can Google you and then find out what works. Yep. Get yep. your apps in mind. So mm -hmm. That works out well. 
Hey, thanks for showing us this. This is very interesting, and you've got so much more. And like you said, you're still going for that ten thousand before you really start to make a, you know some progress. But uh, so far, so good, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Appreciate thanks for speaking it. with us. Thank you.